So hello everyone, as you all know, my name is uh, Akbar, and I would like to introduce you all to my new upgraded telescope. So this is called a TASCO 70mm refractor, okay? So it uses lenses instead of mirrors to focus the image. We've added a nice finder scope on there, although we won't really be using that finder scope because uh, I can find images on my own in a much easier method, right? We've got the nice eyepiece holder here and we've just all got a nice telescope here so you don't have to be a kid to use it that can extend the legs can extend and if you notice the lens size for collecting light is very very good we've got a 70 millimeter refractor so it's a 70 millimeter lens it collects a lot of light and it can give us a maximum of 140 times magnification if we really wanted to that's two times the lens di diameter right so um, I do want to introduce the equipment we'll be using for our observing session today. So, we have got our H25 millimeter lens. Let me see if I can get that into focus. So, yep, you should be able to read that it says H25 millimeters. And what that means is Huygens 25 millimeter diameter lens. So, Huygens or lenses with an H on the left side of it uh, get a lot of flack usually because uh, it's like the cheapest kind of lens you can get it only has one lens inside whereas you can get up to like four or eight uh, different kinds of lenses inside nowadays to help gather the light but um, in my opinion Huygen lenses are Huygen lenses are very underrated um, I think it's more about the magnification used and the quality of your telescope optics that determines the image the most. And I've got plenty of lenses that have like two or three lenses in there, multi-coated, all that kind of stuff. And this, this, this will give us 32 times magnification. So the focal length of our telescope is 800 millimeters in length. And the focal length of our eyepiece is 25 millimeters in length. So you get the magnification by dividing the focal length of the telescope by the focal length of the eyepiece and 800 divided by 25 should give us a magnification of 32 times. This telescope can do 140 times, but as you get more interested in observing and learn, the crispest image you'll get, although we can do 140 times magnification with this, is at low magnification. So, um, like I said, I have better lenses, multi-coated, more magnification and everything, but this cheap and, in my opinion, good quality optics lens with low magnification of 32 times that it delivers uh, will give us a very crisp image and crisp images are very important for um, I guess observing but also astrophotography like we can always make use of the crispiest image we get and maybe zoom in afterwards with either a camera or cropping it and all that kind of stuff so we will be using this Huygens 25 millimeter lens to achieve 32 times mostly in our observing session you know so, yeah, I look forward to the day. It should be a a clear day and very good seeing. Uh, we're looking for at least three out of five on the Pickering scale, so at least average seeing. And um, it will gi help give us really crisp views. So the planets will look like they're not under a ocean of water, but the atmosphere will be still and we'll be able to see a lot of detail, hopefully, you know. So we'll be looking at Jupiter and Saturn specifically, you know, so... That'll be great. Um, let's look at some of the other equipment we have. So if you look, we have uh, these two other doohickeys there. So this doohickey here is actually our Bluetooth remote. So, um, you know, you're magnified in your planet and you shake the telescope a little bit when you're taking a picture or video recording and you get a lot of shaking. So it doesn't help with our astro images. So this Bluetooth remote is very handy because if we press it and it's connected to the, to the Bluetooth of the phone, which we'll be using to take photos and videos, then without touching the phone, you can record or take pictures of whatever you want that the phone is seeing through the telescope. So it's nice to have a handy Bluetooth remote with us to take some good astro, still astro images. And still astro images is what we want, right? So um, I do want to introduce you guys to my other doohickey here. This is our phone adapter. So what will happen is the eyepiece will go in here, the phone will go here, that will all go in the telescope, we're going to find our planets uh, through aligning the telescope, and then we're going to take pictures using the remote. 
So our setup, um, of course I'm holding the phone, but the phone will go in there. Our setup should look something like this. So we will take, we shall take the lens like such. Let me get it adjusted for you. So we will take the lens as such, we'll screw it into our adapter. We will put the phone um, in the adapter and then we're going to put everything into the eyepiece holder like this and then we will take astro images using our bluetooth remote by pressing it and the phone will be there so by pressing the bluetooth remote it'll take some nice videos of uh, planets and nice uh, astro images as well which will be great so I'm actually looking forward towards this day and hopefully we can get a, a nice image out of our pretty cool refractor right so I hope you guys uh, enjoy the video Another thing I want to mention when we're dealing with phones and astrophotography is we get to really control the ISO and exposure settings. So planets are very bright. You want to get them down to a nice uh, ISO and exposure level so the camera could capture, capture some fine details if it's possible. And um, our camera will allow us to do that. And we're also recording in 1080p HD uh, for video. And we're taking pictures in a one-to-one -one compressed ratio shot. So that setting should allow us to take sharper photos than you'd normally see in other kind of photos. So it'll be really cool all overall, you know? So yeah, there you go. So, so we're with our telescope here. That's the telescope, right? And you'll see some stars or planets in the sky, some lights. So that bright one you're seeing there. The bright one you're seeing there is Jupiter, right? And then on the bottom left, you should be able to see Saturn. You should be able to see that somewhere there. It should appear on the screen, right? And then you've got Mars on the way bottom left there. So those should be, all be visible today. Very good day, very good seeing conditions. Uh, we're going to use our lens here, which gives us 32 times zoom to take some good fake pictures. So that's really cool. Yep, so let's, let's let Saturn pass by the pass through the frame there. It's looking really good right now, tilted. We're at 32 times magnification and some digital zoom. I think about 8 times digital zoom, but it's really, really cool. Let's have a look at it while it's tilted on its side. We've got good seeing conditions today. I think it's average 3 out of 5, but that's really, really good. Especially for Saturn, which is tilted, and we're looking at it at 32 times zoom, so and some digital zoom from the camera, so it looks really, really cool. So we've got Jupiter floating across the screen there. 
So you should be able to see the two stripes easily. And it's really, really cool. The great red spot should be transiting soon, maybe in about two or three hours. You should see it on the bottom band there. But this is indeed very, very cool. The seeing should be average, 3 out of 5 today, but it's still really, really cool, you know? We're filming at ISO 250 and exposure 1 over 750. We should be in perfect focus here too, which is really, really cool. So thank you everyone for joining me on my journey of astronomy. Have yourself a good day. Bye.